Howdy y'all, my name is Nate and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So for those of you who are new, this is a video journal of questions in my life that I try to answer that are pertinent and in my head like all the time. And then also at the same time, it's an educational channel where I try to teach people to build a community and potentially monetize it out of their interests and hobbies. So I realize it's a very weird mix of niches and interests, but I try to be a synthesizer of concepts based on personal examples from my life. And I'm just trying to help other people become the same way. And so one of the topics that I wanna talk about now is being a late bloomer in life and then how life can get crazy after a certain point. So for those of you who don't know, I turned 28 last weekend, I think, because today is, yeah, today's February or whatever. So yeah, I turned 28 and it's making me think about a lot of things in my life. Uh, I don't know, I've always kind of thought, when I was 18, I always wondered what it would be like to hit like my 30s and like where I would be, what I would be doing, uh, honestly, even if I was still alive. Um, not to get too depressing, but yeah, it was just, I always questioned like what I would be at 30 years. And I know that I'm not 30 yet. I still have two years left, but I'm getting to that point. And I feel like when you enter your late twenties, early thirties, life starts to get very different and stuff like that. Like you see it around you. Like a lot of my friends from high school and my college years, heck, even grad school, they're starting to get married, they're starting to have kids, they're, they have their own house, if they're lucky enough to buy that. And I'm just sitting here recording YouTube videos and then enjoying embassy events here in Washington, DC. So, you know, life is kind of crazy after a certain point. Um, so I wanted to talk about also being a late bloomer. And what I mean by a late bloomer is that for those of you who don't know, again, um, I, in my other videos have covered it being very difficult for me to find a passion in my life, especially when I was like younger, like the high school guidance counselors, the college counselor, they would always ask the same damn question, like, what is your passion in life? And I would be sitting there and I'm just like, I have no idea, dude. Like, I'm barely 18 years old. I'm, I'm still growing up. I, I don't exactly know what I want to do with the rest of my life. And I just feel shoehorned into a box if you ask me that question. So when I came to college, or sorry, when I was 18 and I went to college in California, uh, which is where I did my undergrad and my grad program, I picked environmental science because it was a combination of different subjects that I was semi good at. Like for example, environmental science is a combination of like biology, which you know I'm good at, frankly, um, which is surprising. Geology, I was okay at, you know, I could work my way around the map if I had to. Physics, I was absolutely terrible at, uh, no matter how hard I tried. It's just some things in life you just don't have uh, an affinity for, and that was one of them. And chemistry was, it was average. Like if I worked at it really hard, which I did, I could get, you know, passing grade, like a B or whatever, and like more. So definitely did that. But environmental science was a combination of like all those things. And I picked that because I just didn't want to be one of those undecided majors in college that spent the next four years of their life, like not wasting time because looking back on it, it's college is all about self-discovery and trying a bunch of different things to ultimately find out what you want to do for work, you know, or grad school if you want to go that route as well. And so it's not a waste of time, but you know, I was paying for college. My parents were help, helping me a little bit, but I was, you know, Thank goodness I was studious enough to get like a scholarship that covered like 75% or something like that. It was like, it was really, it was really big and it made me really feel grateful for all the hard work that I put when I was in high school. So a late bloomer in my eyes is someone that like is just honestly trying to figure out their way in life and they don't exactly know like what they want to do and they have many different interests, but they don't exactly know like which one to focus on, especially if that means like for education or a career. So back in my college days, for example, again, I studied environmental science, but at the same time, I was more learning like how to be a man, honestly. Like I've always kind of, been, this is kind of embarrassing to admit, but like I've always been kind of a mama's boy where, you know, I was, protected a lot growing up and that was the way that my parents raised me and stuff like that so when I went to college I was exploring like anything I could you know like um 
interacting with women, as embarrassing as that sounds again, or just living life, you know, living on my own, just a lot of different things like trying to be a man, an adult, and growing up. So school was there, and environmental science was the subject area that I studied into, and then I found marine biology, I decided to do some research in there, one thing leads to another, and then all of a sudden I'm in grad school studying that, and then another subject area, data science I believe, I became a data scientist as well for a bit as a contractor when I graduated, but that's besides the point. My point is, is that like, I've always been like a late bloomer. Like it's taken me a lot of time in my life to figure out like what I want to do and where I want to go. And the only way that I could truly like find that out was by moving to like different places. Like for example, I spent seven years in California, but it was all over the place. I lived in Long Beach. I lived in Ventura, Oxnard. A little bit of time in LA uh, as well and then I moved to like Maine after I got sick of everything and that was quite the experience I, I can go into that like in a different video if you want me to Maine was wild honestly it's just a different way of living up there in that state and then now I'm in DC and I'm sitting in front of a camera just like or my phone and just recording YouTube videos talking about my life hopefully that it you know contributes some value to this world and to other people that are kind of facing the same issues so being a late bloomer is not a bad thing because you can end up discovering what you want to do and your interests later on in life from a more mature standpoint. Like I'm 28 and I still consider myself to be a kid because I still regard the world in a very juvenile way. I'm like the class clown type of thing. But back to like being a late bloomer, it's just like I feel like in a way that kind of gives you an advantage because like the older you grow up the more mature you get hopefully but then the more skill sets you develop and the higher your analytical capability becomes the more you like self-educate yourself and so like out of nowhere in the dc area like you know i talk about this a lot in my other videos but like again i found my embassy uh liking and like i go to like all these international embassy events and all of this like started like a year ago when I was like uh, 27 and stuff like that. And that kind of relates to my other point about life being crazy after a certain point. So in terms of like a chronological timeline from like, for me personally, so from like zero to like 18 years, you know, I'm chilling, I'm living life, I'm enjoying school. I've always loved, you know, learning in school and stuff like that. And then when I hit 18, that's technically like when you become like a man in like the Western world and stuff like that. That's when I like head off to college and that's when my like perception of the world and just the way that I think starts to change a little bit. Like I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be like, you know, one of those guys and tell you like, oh my God, like I saw the world so differently when I was like 18 years old and I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. No, that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is just telling you my shift in mindset as I grew older uh, into like, you know, my late twenties. And so, from like 18 till 23, I wanna say. Yeah, because I graduated college in 2017. So I would have been like in my early 20s or something like that. It was quite the ride, like taking all these classes and meeting all these people, doing this research and just living in the US for the first time in California. You know, I went on trips with friends. I experienced life. I did study abroad in Ireland, Dublin for like three months. It, you know, when they say college is not for everyone and stuff like that, I kind of regard that. I mean, it's not, you know what I mean? Like some people don't get a lot out of it. I did because like it allowed me to expand my network and just at the same time ex explore the world through like doors that were like opening for me with education. So from like 18 to 23, my mindset and my perception of the world was slowly shifting as I like grew up. And then the real kind of like jumpstart was when I like entered like the workforce for like the first time in my life. I worked at like an environmental consulting firm in Long Beach and I was like terrified, you know, like this was my first job. I had such anxiety because like it was, you know, my first job and I was like, you think that it lasts forever when in reality like it doesn't and it was just a year so long story short i didn't like what i was doing as i'm grateful for having that opportunity for anyone that from that you know consulting company that like is watching this if at all they won't but 
I'm grateful for that opportunity and for the self-discovery that it just makes you feel through like all these different experiences. And I ran away to grad school because I was just afraid. Like I, I just didn't want to, I, I didn't want to stay there. I couldn't see myself putting 20 years of my life into that. I was like, I can't do this. So I ran away to grad school um, in Santa Barbara, California. And I, frankly, graduate school was one of the best times of my life. Like I, I almost want to cry about it because of like all the good memories I like had, but like those two years of my life when I lived in Santa Barbara from like 2018 to like 2020, I felt so close to the people that I was going to school with. Like they actually felt like an extended family. And funny enough, I actually uh, talked to one of my old friends from grad school who was the year um, below me, I believe. Like shout out to Paul. <laughs> uh, you know, we were talking literally like last night when this video was being recorded and he is one of the uh, few people that I, you know, I, I try to keep up as much as I can with everybody, but you know, everyone grows distant and unless you were super close in grad school, then you don't make an effort. But yeah, shout out to Paul, my man. Um, he always calls me and makes a good point of like doing that on a monthly basis. And I do the same, or at least I, you know, I try to. And he's younger than I am. And like, he just, whenever he calls me, like we just start, you know, shooting the stuff and, we just talk about like life and just like being two young men and like where we're going and like what we're doing, you know? So like graduate school was like my, it was one of the best times in my life because I was just, I was just figuring out who I was and I was like talking to all these people that were like older than me because the average age in the graduate program was like 28 to 30. And I was like barely, 23 at the time or something like that you know what i mean so like i was talking to all these people that had such life experience and like i i looked at them like older brothers and sisters we were going camping we had these house parties damn i miss those days and just like every like the world seemed so much smaller then and just life just seemed so much simpler go to school go to class hang out with you know the gals and guys and just like yeah, it brings a tear to my eye, you know? But then COVID hit, the pandemic, um, right when I graduated. And that's when I got my first contractor job working full remotely. And then I decided that after seven years in the state of California, I wanted to change. So I went to Maine and I was there for like 10 months. I was working for a nonprofit. Great job, great people. And then, you know, circumstances happened and which I won't go into, but like, it, it was just a mutual parting. And then I ended up in DC and then you know how the rest goes. So my point is, is that like being a late bloomer and finding your passions and interests in life like later, it's there, the delay is there for a purpose, you know? Like for me especially, like I can tell you that in terms of like life getting crazy, like, considering how I grew up abroad as a kid and then my development as you know an individual and as a man over time I think about myself when I was 18 compared to like now 10 years later as a 28 year old and I still have a lot of growing up to do you know what I mean like we all have flaws that we need to work on of course but I just think about all the progress that I've made you know, and I've made a lot of failures in my life, like everybody has, and it's an, an irony for someone that's 28 saying that, you know, like there's probably some older heads watching this video that are just like, this guy's 28 and he's full of, you know, he's full of whatever. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but you know, I'm just, I'm just speaking from the heart here. It's just like, you watch yourself grow up after like 10 years and you're like the person that's always there with you, even if you're in a relationship or, you know, whatever, if you have kids or whatever, I don't, by the way, I, I don't have any kids or whatever, but the person that's always there is you, you know, you, yourself. And for me, it's interesting because like, I tend to talk to myself like a lot, uh, which is the sign of insanity, you never know. But it's just like, I have watched myself grow up with through all these life experiences being a late bloomer and like, you know, de developing these passions like later on in my life, which is still early to some. And I'm here to tell you that that's all right. You know, being a late bloomer is a-okay. If it takes you many, many years uh, for you to figure out what you wanna do, what your purpose is, all that good stuff, 
then so be it. Take your time. Make failures. Try out new things. Try out new jobs if they don't work out. Uh, if you're feeling anxiety and depression because of a job, um, don't don't quit until you have something else lined up. Please don't put that. Don't put yourself through that. That's not worth it. But like, my point is is that like it's important to self reflect always. You know, and this is the point of these chats is for me to kind of self reflect and you know take all my life experiences and just tell you in the hopes that it like helps somebody younger. You know what I mean? Like 28 going on 30 that, you know, that's, it's not old necessarily, but you know, most people have their stuff together when they're 30. I have my stuff together roughly and stuff like that. And I'm still figuring it out as I go along. But I remember when I was 18 and just, you know, struggling in the dark, trying to figure out what I wanna do, having these like bouts of identity crisis because like, you know, my parents were telling me one thing, I was telling myself another, everyone else was telling me something else. And like, at the end of the day, it, it takes like life experience to realize like what you want, you know what I mean? So like, that's what you gotta do at the, at the very end of the day. So that's being a late bloomer. And then also life gets crazy. <laughs> like it really does. Like I can tell, but in a good way though, or a bad way, it depends on your circumstances. Of course, like you can get hit by a car, you can be in the hospital, whatever. But I'm just here to tell you that like, they say for I don't know how true this is for women, okay? But I'm just speaking as a, as a man. So after, they say like life for men starts when they actually hit their 30s, which is interesting because I always thought that like, it was like, you know, it, it started when you were 18 or like even before, but like, I'm talking about like, when you, when you realize that you're, you're an actual individual that's capable of producing value in the world and like, feeling like you're okay with yourself if that makes sense it probably doesn't but whatever but it's just like i'm 28 now and compared to the person i was like 10 years ago it's literally two different people and i feel like if you're not growing and changing over time like i did and still am and stuff like that then you will stay the same person for the rest of your life and that's not a good thing people that stay the same are incapable of change, as cliche as that sounds. And if you're not constantly growing and changing in a good way, um, then I don't know. I mean, you're you'll just stay the same as as you know as depressing as that sounds. But the thing is, is that like life being crazy, like for me and like now, I can tell you that like with the embassy stuff that I do on the side, with the people that I'm meeting, to the new things that I'm trying out by like a YouTube channel life it life really does change when you like start hitting your like you know mid to like late 20s for me it did at least i don't know if, if y'all uh is the if it's the same way but like the pandemic back in 2020 and god forbid we have more of those things honestly i don't want to lose more years of my life to staying inside all the time but like the pandemic really like one of the silver linings of like you know and i'm not yeah one of the silver linings of like everything that happened was the fact that it made people question what they really want out of life. And I feel like for me, it didn't exactly happen until like years later after the fact, when I started trying out new things and going to new places. And I'm like, wait a sec, like, what do I want out of my life? You know, like, what, what do I want? You know, and now it's like, I have these embassy events that I'm in charge of like reporting on, self job or whatever. I'm like filming YouTube videos because like I want to and I want to talk to the camera and get better at that stuff. I live in DC, you know, um, I have some travel plans for the year and stuff like that. And like life is only getting better and I hopefully it does keep on getting better the older that I get. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling. That's, you know, we covered about like, you know, being a late bloomer, that's okay. If it takes you years to find out what your passion purpose in life is that's fine that's what life is all about and with life being crazy after a certain point lord knows it, it'll probably get crazier and stuff like that like in the future but for those of you that are kind of in the same boat like i am where like over time you've noticed yourself changing and you're just kind of growing and like life is crazy in a good way because you're constantly busy you're curious you're excited you know like you're not staying in the house all the time depressed as heck and stuff like that. Um, it's really, it's an invigorating feeling. And I, and I hope that, you know, you get that by like watching this video, whoever does. 
So anyway, like and subscribe for more. Definitely we'll be doing more of these uh, chat style videos throughout the you know year and stuff like that. Do keep an eye out for more educational videos that I plan on like posting. So I went into detail about like how to build a community around an interest and a hobby. However, I did that like high level overview for a reason because I'm going to be diving into like a lot of the different skill sets that I've developed over the course of like my life and especially over the past year uh, to help you out. And it'll be a different style of video, if that makes sense. More scripted and shorter, definitely, without the ramblings and stuff. So like and subscribe for more. And thank you so much for all the support. We're up to 31 subscribers as of, as of the last count. And I'm so grateful that people just want to hear me talk. It, um, you know, coming from someone that has like um, some self-confidence issues, it just, it, it means a lot. That's all. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it.